your turn, okay? I'm going, I'm waiting to do it. So once everyone's in, then I'm going to make it a gallery mode.
Phoebe? Yes. Hi, how are you? So Jonathan Raskin is at college at the Art Institute of Chicago. So he's also not going to be here, but we're hoping that he will also zoom in. Okay. Do you want her on the screen the whole time? Okay. And I'm going to switch right, it over. I guess we'll get started. Why is so when we read, we're going to be taking off our masks, okay? Just because it would be really uncomfortable to try to read. And we have at least six feet here. 
We'll try to make sure we did that. <laughs> so I want to say welcome to the Beals Memorial Library. Uh, my name is Manuel King, and I am the director here at the library. And um, I want to uh, thank our judges, Candace Curran, Susan Middleton, and B.J. Thurston, uh, for being so diligent and selecting our poets for tonight's event. Um, I also want to say, finally, thank God, we're all together in one room for an event like this. We have a little, before we get started with reading, the finalist reading, um, I would like to invite the judges up to read a selection of their work, um, so you can just see how great they are. So, <laughs> uh, we're going to start with Susan Middleton. Um, Susan was the very first winner of the Beals Prize for Poetry. Uh, we have a tradition now that the, the winner of the contest can become the judge for the following year. Um, she is a writer uh, and editor. Um, she writes fiction, nonfiction, poetry. She's the co-founder of the Slate Roof Press, uh, which published her chapbook, Seed Case of the Heart. Her work has also been published in Peregrine, The Berkshire Review, Stonewall 2, and Silkworm, among other publications. In 2013, she won second prize in the Right Actions Annual Prose and Poetry Contest for her short story, Time is a Water Body Filled with Names. Currently, she is putting together a full-length collection of mostly Tonka-based poems to be called Flicker, Flicker. Susan? Saving the Lamb, 
was a Massachusetts Book Award highly recommended reading choice. Her second book, Night Walking, was released by Haley's in 2011, and her third book, titled Speakeasy, Cat House Farm, is the culmination of a decade of historical research about a 1770s farmhouse. Recently, she has become involved with the writing of the land project, which pairs poets with conservation land, both in New England and across the United States. Mm -hmm. Hi there. It's good to see the people who wrote poems at this point. I never thought I would see you. <laughs> so I think we're all reading pandemic poems. Um, not you, but I am. This is called The Pandemic Sweater. Before the lockdown, I went out to a dress shop I rarely visited and bought an expensive sweater, which I imagined wearing when I attended poetry readings or dined at fine restaurants. It had an elegant cowl neck. Its embroidered tag read Swift River, and the color a deep blue marled with gray knit a soft boucle yarn, which I later joked was French for snags on utterly everything. <laughs> During all the months of isolation, it was the first thing I grabbed when I walked the dogs each day, or when I felt a chill as I stared out my window at the bird feeder and the seasons as they changed. Eventually, I stopped snipping all the broken, ragged threads until the sweater resembled a hair shirt. I reasoned that no one would see me anyway as I kept on washing and drying and wearing it daily. When the tides of COVID began to recede and I finally felt the jab of my first vaccination, I took off the sweater, balled it up, stuffed it into a donation bag, destined for recycling. No way did I want to appear in public looking frazzled. Until today, when I pulled it back out of the bag I had placed in the trunk, then jammed it deep into the bottom drawer of my dresser, just in case. <laughs> Massachusetts Poet Seat Laureate. She is a founding member uh, and organizer of group multimedia installations including Interface, Four on the Floor, Three on a Tree, and most recently Exploded View. Her publications include the anthology Bone Cages, the chapbooks Bugaboos and Dirty Dishes, and the poetry book Playing in Rats. She has published in journals, Raw Nerve, Meat for Tea, and many others. And it's a Thank you. So nice being here and seeing you. And congratulations to the finals. It's good to see you. Um, I couldn't decide which poem to read. I had a pandemic poem, but I had one I wrote a couple of days ago. You should never read the poem you wrote. <laughs> it's called Hibernation. Sick and tired of herself, she could feel her voice getting underfoot. The demands, commands, utterance of despair. She could feel herself stutter, petering out, so that finally she just shut up, took herself to bed, stopped speaking altogether. And what a peace. Even he couldn't coax it out of her. And kind of funny how he missed it and began again reading to her, lying quietly beside, like the old days, kissing those shuttered eyes. And didn't it feel like ants on her lids? Didn't she feel a tickle, something making her mouth curl at the edges like the bud of a silky peony? tight at first, and then the slow unfurling, so that she began feeling 
Very soon, she may have something, a thing or two to say. And yes, it would begin with her lips on the stem, the silk of his neck. Thank you. Thank you guys. Um, so now we're going to start our um, finalist reading. Now we're going to start in alphabetical order, which puts Mary, is it Bookinger? Bookinger. Yeah. Bookinger. Yeah. Okay, almost got it. <laughs> Mary Bookinger. Um, it is the author of six collections of poetry. She lives in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and is president of the New England Poetry Club, and also a professor at MCPHS University in Boston. Mary? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, people. <laughs> Fisher. Um, he is from the Chair City, 
Anybody know where the chair, what the chair city is? It's Gardner, Massachusetts. Right, you know, like the next town over. <laughs> so he was born in the 50s. Um, and Mark started with writing poems in the 70s to impress the ladies, he says. And a while later, he picked up the guitar and set about uh, fusing poetry and music to impress his family. Mark continues to write on socio-political topics along with declarations of love and musings of what if and what not. And, and why not, excuse me. Thank you so much. Well, I'm not sure what to make of that impressing the lady's remark. Uh, <laughs> you could rewind, possibly. <laughs> So I've got a short piece, uh, but I, I just wanted uh, to put a little forward in on it, uh, and I think in this crowd, this is probably not necessary, but the origin of the term, a murder of crows, is based on old folks, folk tales and superstitions, and reflects a time when groupings of animals had colorful and poetic names. And so I'm going to use that. Um, this was written on a cloudy day. I was high on a ladder, about 30 feet in the air, painting the peak of the gable end of my house way high above the gardens and, uh, and, and the old growth trees. And I began to imagine this scenario up and down the ladder um, of a story, a situation less than kind, less than loyal, and far too likely to be true. The Wren. Once a small songbird flew into my wood, a wren seeking shelter and shade. Careful to cover the trap that I laid, no promises offered, no offerings made, and me, being the crow that I am, with thoughts of a murder and the song of a wren. No place in my nest for a fine feathered friend. I stole what I wanted and frightened her out of the glen. A raven is black and as bold as a thunderclap, and there is no end to my greed. But she, she was as soft as the silk from a milkweed, adrift on the warm summer breeze that had carried her seed. But a bird in hand is as good as a memory, but harder to hold. A bird on the wing can be captured and kept like a picture and never grow old. Now I'm an old crow by the side of the road. Now I know what I should have known then Without a flock or a friend, alone as I drift and I dream of the wren. Thank you. and mother of three young children. She lives in Baldwinville, Massachusetts, where she grows and sells specialty daffodils in the spring. Is, there she is. Fight to the death. When out of, my, of dream, I hear my dear 
say with childlike cheer, I found it, a mouse, come look, he's really cute. I can, <laughs> I can hardly approach the cat to see him there. Caught a gray spot with two dark dots for eyes, oversized ears, racing heart, just the father looking for food for his family in the cold wood. It is crazy how the unknown other can shake our bones to pain. Even still, light and a proper introduction can calm our fears and change our minds and grant us the courage to be finally kind. <laughs> Phoebe Hines is next. She is a Western Mass-based poet. Their work has been um, a space to explore in some of the most abstract and forgiving ways. With heavy influence of collage, their work balances between humor and the mundane as they begin to digest the, the appreciation of what the present and past are able to give. When they are not writing, they are either creating in the kitchen, singing around the house, or busy educating youth about the natural world. Be behind. Oh, 
Um, this is called Sorrento, and as you may know or not, it's a town in the southern part of Italy. And there's a reference in this poem to the boot, which of course is a geographical reference to the boot-shaped bottom of Italy. Sorrento by Aidan Needle. You wake me up early to leave the terracotta villa every day in August. We had to sneak out before your parents woke up, you and I, biking to the little quarries and full-blown meadows, hiking in the heat. It's hot, so fucking hot. Summer in the boot, sweat pouring out of me, watering the cement we rode on, quenching its eternal thirst. Keep up, you fall from miles ahead of me. I try to quit pedaling, but my legs continue on their own. With the shore in eyeshot, the bike would ride out under me, a skidding surfboard pushing toward the placid waterbed. Your lap, the dedication page to an unknowing foreigner who's never ridden this fast. Swimming after me, playing water polo above the swamp of lavenders that kiss our feet. Sobbing wet curls stuck together, our necklaces in holy matrimony. Fine tailored twine, legs coiled around each other, clinging like lint on my shirtless chest. Drinking the fresh water submerged in the sense of senselessness draining the heat from our bodies, the feeling of leaving the pool, my cool blood suddenly clotted like cream. We'd run into the meadow, trying to get to the tree, the tree with dangling lemons, the lemons you would peel and eat in front of me like candy. I can still taste the tartness today. Next up is Chris O'Carroll. Uh, his poetry collection, The Jokes on Me, was published in 2019, and his work also appears in New York City haiku. Love Affairs at the Villa Nelly, and the Great American Wise Ass Poetry Anthology. <laughs> he is an actor, stand up comedian, and retired journalist living in Palomar. Thank you, Manuel. Earlier today, I was actually rehearsing with my mask on, because I didn't know what the protocols were to be. So it's very exciting to be invited to do this naked. <laughs> my wife and I have at various times in our lives been both dog people and cat people. So this evening I have a cat call. This is Memo from the Cat. The truth is simple. No need to ignore it. I'm good at killing, and you prize me for it. I keep your living quarters free of mice by methods some call skill and some call vice. <laughs> you had me neutered young. I'm calmer for it. And once that mojo's gone, one can't restore it. But even in my less rambunctious age, I feel some lost red undertones of rage. When you complain about your soiled floor, it seems beneath you to upgrade me for it. The work I do, it sometimes leaves a trace, entrails or vomit in some awkward place. Just deal with it. Don't scold bad kitty for it. You've got that odor-killing liquid, pour it. Mop up as best you can, move on with life. I'm sleepy now, so spare me all your strife. <laughs> So uh, our next poet is Dennis Martin. 
Kiana. And he is the winner of the Franklin County, Massachusetts Poet Street, so Poet Street Laureate. Laureate. Um, he is the editor of the Poet Seeds Poetry Contest Silver Anniversary Anthology and an adjunct professor in English and Film Studies at several Massachusetts University and colleges. His prose and poems have appeared in several print and electronic publications and have been showcased in Western Massachusetts library, literary events and Massachusetts public libraries. His films have won awards at Seattle, Ann Arbor, Cannes, and the Berlin Film Festival, and have been distributed and screened worldwide. He lives in Coleraine, Massachusetts. Good evening, folks. Thank you, Manuel. Uh, beautiful building we have here. Wonderful judges who selected me and my poem, <laughs> and others. <laughs> Actors are hard to follow. <laughs> um, so I'll try. Um, this poem uh, is actually in a collection now uh, that's looking for a publisher. And uh, that collection is called, entitled Peeping. Um, and I think this particular poem, half poem, half song, is representative of that collection. To escape the confining. I go in the deciduous sleep and evergreen dance to the wind in the gaps between limbs and trunks when moccasins are still enough. No snow yet, I feel the earth custom fit my feet. Left, right, toe ball, heel, each step I take, hidden under these, my untapped route to lake, pond, river bank, shores, concealed by reeds, rocks, dunes I bend to see in the shallow and deep, self and sky, and waters clear as air. I cut my hands, wet my Okay, so I don't know, is Jonathan Raskett on the Zoom link? We don't, no, we only have one person. We only have Paula. Okay, yep. so um, Jonathan um, is another absentee poet tonight, but he has an excuse. He's in Chicago attending uh, the Art Institute of Chicago. Uh, he is from Central Massachusetts, and he's, uh, in a, he's a graduate of Mount Massachusetts Community College's art program. His work has previously been published in Rejected Collective's first issue, as well as the Bodega 508. So, um, do, do one of our judges want to read Jonathan's BG? Thank you, BG. ignites. When sunset ignites the leftovers of yesterday's rain and every pool throws rays of fire, I think of you then. For only poets and goddesses can animate a simple puddle. Yet you fear I burn too bright while you burn the incombustible as if it were kerosene. How could I dust the coal from my coat and watch the sea burn, knowing another goddess drowned without knowing her love? A sad affair indeed to live without luminous passion, sadder still to keep it for your own. To sit alongside your light would be a hazard for us both. Yet a life void of risk is void of love. To burn me in the third degree is preferable to the unmarked skin of complacency. So our next uh, poet is Paula Sayward, and she
she is actually on the Zoom connection. There she is. Hi, Paula. <laughs> oh, hold on. Um, I gotta unmute her. Hold on. <laughs> oh, she, she's muted. Okay. Well, let me just give you a little introduction to Paula. Um, her full-length book of poetry, *Conticle of Light and Dark*, was published by the Synthesis Center for uh, Center Press in 2014. A chapbook, *What Sleeps Inside*, was published by Slate Roof Press in the summer of 2010. Her poetry has appeared in Sanctuary, the Journal of Massachusetts Audubon Society, the Naugatuck River Review, Cyclamen, and Amp, Sward, Sinister Wisdom, the Zuni Mountain Poets, and Adrian Rich, the Tribute Anthology. She lives in Western Massachusetts with her longtime woman partner. Paula, are you ready? And just to let you know that um, the sound has been a bit of a challenge, so I would appreciate it, Manuel, if we could have all these poems um, in a hard copy. Um, the poem I'm reading is Swallows. It was written after a conversation with... Oops. Called... He tells me how they arrive each evening, a dense black cloud as the light begins to die. How they descend, a swarming funnel, falling like smoke, disappearing into reedy marsh to roost. When night presses its shoulder over the water, the sky is empty of their wing sounds, their liquid chirp. I swallow what I want to say to my brother, swallow years, I'm hit of him never hearing me. I think of the birds coming together, of how they must listen to one another as they fall into the dwindling light, how they murmur and nudge each other, dream of migration, 500,000 soft breaths in the darkness. Thank you. So, um, our last reader tonight is Stephanie. How do you pronounce her last name? Shaffron. Shaffron. Stephanie Shaffron is a member of the Straw Dog Writers uh, Guild and the Florence Poets Society. She resides in Northampton, Leeds, I think, to be exact. And um, after Since Unfinished by Richard Blasco, won third place in the Robert P. Colleen 2019 poetry competition. At the lawyer's office was a semi-finalist in the River Sticks 2020 microfiction contest. Stephanie has published her work, her first chapbook, Awakening in 2020. After Story by Richard Blanco was recently published in a 21st century play, Poetry from a Pandemic. Stephanie. My poem was written in the summer of 2020 when uh, the isolation of the pandemic caused a particular challenge to me to be kind. And the poem Kindness by Naomi Shahid Nye brought that into focus for me in a way that I could not ignore. Um, the epigraph that begins the poem is in fact by that poem by her. Breathing Kindness. Before you know kindness as the deepest thing inside, you must know sorrow as the other deepest thing. Naomi Shahid Nine. How to explain to you, I didn't mean to use my tongue as a hammer just now. As if struggling to decipher Greek hieroglyphs on display in a museum of wonder, I fumble for words. I do not know this language. Where are those easily decoded patterns, those familiar endings pairing subject pronouns and with verbs, nouns with gender? If only I learned to breathe in kindness as a girl, to rest in its lap 
and linger. Instead, I practiced waking up with sorrow, crying myself to sleep in its pillow, mumbling muffled words of prayer to drop me into anyone else's life but my own. Breathing was scattershot, survival its only resolve. No matter, one day the language of kindness will slip from my mouth like breath, will bathe you word by word in a sweep of affection and gratitude. <laughs> some below, um, and then Alexis, if you could take some pictures, that would be awesome. Um, yep, that's it. And then, we're gonna, then we'll come back and we'll award the, the, the prize winner. So, uh, why don't we have the tall, do we have tall people on the shorter, shorter ones and stand on the, on the stage. And if we could turn this off, or at least, um, um, do you want Just, her in the picture? Oh yeah, we want. Yeah, <laughs> we're good to have. Yeah. All in the, so then Mark, you're tall. Uh, tall people sitting. Is that your thinking? Sure, sure. You can sit or stand. Well, well, Paula, sit. can you get on the screen so we can oh. add you to the picture? There we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. perfect. <laughs> right. The cars. I will get them in just one second. Okay. So you want the shorties? The shorts. Tall people sit. Well, that's a little bit loud. Tall, not. Oh, you're tall. So you're going to sit. You're going to sit. Okay, stay in the front. Let's consolidate it. I'm going to sit down. Get us back to sit. Oh, you're going to sit. Stand right there. Okay, so I'm horrible with names. Um, if you can move a little bit this way, and then you move a tad bit this way, um, hmm. your shadow is also behind you. <laughs> um, so how can you know what? Hold on, hold on. I got this. Let there be no light. <laughs> it's a little less. Oh, um. Is that hmm. necessary to keep those? Yeah, to keep her up. <laughs> Chris, it's Archer. Okay. So if you can move over just a bit. Oh, too much. Too much, I can see it. Okay. Right. Okay. Everybody, look at me. Hold on. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit better. So if you guys want to open your thingies and oh. hold it. Oh. Paula, I'm assuming yours is going to come in the mail. <laughs> okay. Oh, you're leaving up the left. Oh, you got a name tag. Yes. <laughs> That's nice. Okay. Thank you, guys. You didn't say smile. Uh. Well, you guys smile with your eyes. <laughs> So yeah, Paula, yours is going to come in the mail. He gets me to do a lot of things. Okay, I'm going to get her off.
So the weird echo on the Zoom is all happening. I would appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, my name is all the time. <laughs> okay, so you're not going to make any announcements. This is all up to us? That's it. Okay. So you're going to have to show that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I'm going to start. And I am meeting for third place. And there is a uh, introductory paragraph in each of the the winner blurbs, the, the cards. That you're gonna, you're each gonna get this after uh, we're done. And there's a introduction that's printed in, in the front of the specific comments for each of you, which I'm gonna read only once. I'm just gonna read this um, for this particular person, and then you'll just. Remember that when you're listening to the other two words. Mm -hmm. Judging poems is not an easy task. We look for fresh language and an organized movement of the poem to, to arrive at some discovery by its end. Each poem acquires its own identity, and each poet instills their own voice and experience to create a poem that will convey that message. Most of 
all, we believe successful poems use both language and poetic images to distill experience and emotion. In the end, we all have our different tastes and must find agreement in choosing poems. It was quite a process to uh, <laughs> compare our, our lists and uh, winnow it down something that we could all agree on. Okay. The shape and appearance of the poem, Lincoln's Throat, is appealing and appropriate to the content that unfolds. I love the opening lines. It began when all was very cold, scraped by a heavy moving slowness. The imagery this poem contains is stunning, and in particular, the simile, like a long marriage scoured by change, by avalanche, and melt, the daily orbital spin. The final lines, see how it buries our skies, my love, our narrow and paltry trails. Bring the poem back into the speaker's realm, echoing the contrast of the natural world to the personal and intimate space of a relationship. So, congratulations, Mary Buchinger. chosen to include and exclude, to compose a meditative journey for the reader. The poem crests with the fifth section, now leaves unfold to feed on the fresh stairway to autumn, and a decade's worth of what we know and what we don't know rises and falls like a plane, until finally the poem's journey ends as it asks, what are you carrying? about the land. This series of poetic snapshots combined to create a loving tribute to a wild and open space. Congratulations, Phoebe Hines, second prize. Try again, or do you guys want to do yeah, it? I would rather she read it. Okay. Because... Paula, I'm going to unmute you, you real quick. If she wants to. Oh, it asked to unmute. Or else I can. Hold on. Okay. You'd like me to read it again? Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Yes, congratulations. Thank you very much. Um, this is actually one of my favorite poems. Mm -hmm. <laughs> swallows. 
My brother tells me about thousands of swallows living on Goose Island near the mouth of the Connecticut River. He tells me how they arrive each evening, a dense black cloud as the light begins to die. How they descend, a swarming funnel falling like smoke, disappearing into reedy marsh to roost. When night presses its shoulder over the water, the sky is empty of their wing sounds, their liquid chirp. I swallow what I want to say to my brother, swallow years of never having him hear me. I think of the birds coming home, coming together, of how they must listen to one another as they fall into the dwindling light, how they murmur and nudge each other, dream of migration, 500,000 soft breaths in the darkness. I feel like I should also say that all the finalist poems were wonderful, oh, and yes. I really love the way you read them. You yeah. all did a great job, so that is to be commended. So, yeah. <laughs>